Alright, so for this project, we are looking at Mad Libs and arrays and lists. So a list, well first I'll show you the project. So it says type a name. I type in bet. Type an animal. I say donkey. Type an adjective. I say weird. Gives me a story. Hi, my name is Ben. I go to school on a donkey. My friends are weird. Okay, so as you can tell, it already has a story. And it just generates new stories with the words that you give it. This over here is a list or an array, and every orange part that appeared is an item on that list. So it's storing all the words that I'm telling it. If I say Bob, it stores Bob. If I say Donkey, then it stores Donkey. So to do that, we're going to be creating, in our Scratch project, in under variables, we're going to be making a list. So making a list is down here, and you can call it words. Now, when the green flag is clicked from events, we're going to have three slots because I'm going to ask three times for things. So you can have more if you have a longer story, which makes it more fun, or you can have less. But I only have three times that I'm asking, so I'm just going to grab the second command, add thing to words, and make the slot empty. So that when the item shows up in the list, it is also empty. Now after we add something to words, I just want to make sure that my cat always starts in the middle of the screen, so I'm going to go to motion and grab go to x blank y blank. Then I'm going to go to sensing, and I'm going to grab ask what's your name and wait. So in sensing when we have ask what's your name, we're asking for the user's input, and whatever information the user gives us is stored in a variable called answer. So that's very important. So when we grab ask what's your name, instead I'm going to say please give me a noun. Now the user is going to type in a noun or if we follow the same example we'll have a name. After the user gives me the name I want to make sure that whatever that answer is, whatever the name is, is stored in these variables here. So I'm going to go scroll down and I'm going to replace item one of words with the answer. Then I'm just going to repeat the steps and I'm going to ask again. Uh, this time I'm going to ask what, uh, pick an animal, or give an animal. Whatever the user's animal is, is stored in this variable answer, which needs to be in the next slot. So we're going to again replace item, not one, but two. So remember there's another slot here, so item two with whatever the answer is. And finally I ask one more time. Give me an, an adjective, or you could say a location, or whatever you want. And then the answer to that is going to be again saved. So you're just going to repeat the steps as many times as you are asking for a certain type of word. And you're going to change this to whatever item number it is. So it's not, you're never going to have the same item number uh, repeat. Now after all those values are saved, we're just going to um, broadcast message. So if you remember, broadcast message sends a signal. So you can keep it as message one if you want, but I'm creating a new message and I'm just calling it, um, we'll call it ready. Now when we get when I receive, not message one, but when I receive ready, then I want it to uh, put together the story. So you should already have a story in mind um, of sentences that make sense with the type of words that you're asking, a name, an animal, an adjective. So if I continue with the same story, then I would say something for two seconds. We're learning a new block here, which is in operators. If you scroll down, you can have join. And join apple and banana, as you'll see, it puts together. So if we just do this part quickly, it says apple banana. It put together the words that were in these two slots. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together um, my sentence with the answer that they gave for item one. So, um, hi, my name is, and then whatever their answer was, we're just going to put that back in. So we're just going to do control C and control V. 
but but because we can't just pick any answer, we can't do control C control V. We have to do specific item numbers. That's why we save them. So we're gonna do item one of words. Hi, my name is item one of words. What is item one of words? Well we replace this empty space here with whatever the answer was for their name, which is Bob. And then we're just going to take this three piece block, control C, control V it, and we're just going to change the number and the sentence inside. So instead of, hi, my name is Bob, it's going to be, I go to school on a, uh, and then we have item two. So you guys be really creative with whatever you can put in here, right? Um, so you don't have to follow what I'm doing. My friends are blank. And then finally, how does it end off? We want to make sure that whenever the game restarts, that people are able to choose new words and that the list doesn't just grow. So we have to delete all of words. So in variables, delete not one of the words, but all of the words. So let's see if this game works. Please give me a name. Okay, the name is Bob. Give me an animal. Um, cat. Give me an adjective. Red. Hi, my name is Bob. I go to school on a cat. <laughs> my friends are Bob. I was supposed to give an adjective, but you'll notice that the array here in the list deleted all of the words so we can replay the game. Um, it might be easier to make sure you put spaces in your join texts so that it takes into account the space. But that is the end of this quick and really fun game. I hope you guys enjoyed it and make some really cool fun games.